I've been running ZSH for quite a while now, and honestly, it's a really great shell. It has some nice extensions over Bash. I don't really care much for the scripting language changes, but when it comes to some of the interactive features, like the way you can do, say, tab selection, for example, I think those are really cool. And it's also got a really active community for things like general support, as well as plugins and things of that nature. But back when I first started using ZSH, and even now, I still see some really, really common mistakes, and those are people conflating Oh My ZSH and ZSH. So when I say things like, I think that Oh My ZSH is a massive waste of time, you have people commenting saying, but you run Oh My ZSH, thinking that the shell itself is the same thing as Oh My ZSH. And the other thing is that when people do actually understand the difference, there are some people who think that to actually make ZSH somewhat usable, you actually need Oh My ZSH. Now, out of the box, ZSH is configured way worse than Bash is, at least on most distributions, but with a couple of very small tweaks, that can easily be addressed. Now, I'm always covering unnecessary things in this channel, but Oh My ZSH is one of those things that will actively make your ZSH experience worse, and you probably shouldn't be using it. Now, to address my first point, ZSH is just a shell. It's not the aliases that come with it, it's not the themes that you have, it's not the plugins you have, it's not your plugin manager, it's just the application you have that lets you launch up other applications. The exact same as something like Bash or Fish, it's just another way to perform these tasks. Whereas Oh My ZSH is a plugin manager for ZSH. Very similar to something like, say, Vundle, which is a plugin manager for Vim. It lets you install plugins for ZSH, and it will let you manage them and do things of that nature. It's basically just a package manager for your shell. Now, if you go over to the Oh My ZSH GitHub, it will describe itself as a delightful community-driven framework. I prefer to use the term plugin manager, though, because I feel like plugin manager is considerably more accurate. Framework would imply that it adds some extra API or some extra thing to ZSH that makes it so you can actually build plugins onto that, whereas that's not what it does at all. All it basically does is takes existing ZSH scripts and then just loads them, which I wouldn't say is a framework. I would say is far more closer to what a plugin manager does. Is that just me arguing semantics? Yes. I don't have anything more to say about that. Now, Oh My ZSH is plugins for things like themes and syntax highlighting and aliases and basically anything else you could ever want. And when you actually install it, you get a bunch of these plugins pre-installed. Now, ignoring my semantic argument about plugin managers and frameworks, all of this sounds really great. But there's a problem you get with having all of this stuff pre-installed that also exists in something like Doom Emacs or Space Vim. Now, having all of these extra themes installed isn't really a big deal unless you have a really old hard drive with basically no space available. There are only text files, they'll take up a little bit of space. The bigger problem, though, is when it comes to the aliases. So an alias is basically the idea that you can give a program you want to run from your shell a different name, Usually, it's going to be a shorter name to make it more convenient to run. So, for example, say this command right here, which is basically a colored ls script. And because it's basically a colored ls script, I've also got an alias to ls to make it so it's a bit more easy to run rather than writing the entire thing out every single time. But the thing about this alias, because I was the one who actually made it, I know that it actually exists, whereas if you go and use Oh My ZSH, you're going to have all of these extra aliases that someone else made for you that you may not even have the application installed to actually use. And the problem with having a bunch of extra aliases is when you actually get to making your own aliases, you're going to notice there's going to be some clashes, which isn't going to be a problem for running the alias because your aliases should be defined after the ones in Oh My ZSH are actually being loaded, but one of the problems you're going to have is now you have multiple places where the exact same alias is being defined, so if you want to go and work out where to modify it, you have to remember whether it's one of the built-in aliases 
or one of your own personal aliases, which is an extra step that you don't really need. Along with that, if you forget the alias you're trying to use, because you have all of these other extra ones, trying to like stumble around and guess what the alias actually is, is very likely going to make it so you run one of the other aliases rather than the one you're trying to run. Now, I'm not here to argue that everyone should configure ZSH themselves. I fully understand that some people either don't want to do it, or they're just too lazy, or just want something that actually works. In that case, just go onto GitHub, find your favorite YouTubers dot files, copy over the ZSH configuration, and just be done with it. Now you have something pre-configured that doesn't have Oh My ZSH attached to it. And then if you want some of those Oh My ZSH aliases, it's very easy just to go into the file that was defining them, copy them over, and then put them into your ZSH RC. And that sort of takes us into what a ZSH plugin actually is, because technically, ZSH doesn't have a concept of plugins because everything in the shell is just configured through shell script. For example, this right here is just ZSH shell script. And let's go find another one. Let's say this one here. If we look at this one, scroll down into the plugin. This right here is just ZSH shell script. If we go find another one, let's scroll way down. Let's say this one right here. If we look at this one, this right here is ZSH shell script. Every single Oh My ZSH plugin is just ZSH shell script. But if you run Oh My ZSH, it sort of obfuscates this idea and makes it seem like it's actually doing something special. But if you want to go and load this in regular ZSH, it can be done in one line, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. Now, Vim plugins work in basically the same way, where they're just Vim script. But the reason why a Vim plugin manager makes a lot of sense compared to a ZSH plugin manager is because the way that plugins are managed in Vim is really, really bad. You have all of these different folders that all have their own special meaning, and managing that by hand is just a massive pain that you don't want to deal with. ZSH, on the other hand, it's just a single file, and once you've loaded that file, everything is done. Off camera, I went and downloaded the gem plugin, so let's go and add this into ZSH now. So, all you're going to do is go into your ZSH RC. Normally, it's going to be located inside of your home directory. Mine is inside my .config because I have moved some stuff around. And all we need to do is run the source command and then pass in the location of the file. In my case, that's going to be in my scripts directory and then a file known as gem. And then all we need to do is go and restart ZSH. Basically, just open up a new terminal. And one of the commands that we have available is gemb. So gemb, as we can see, that is showing it is a real command. And it's going to fail because we don't actually have anything to gem build. If we go and run gemp, that one's also going to fail. But as we can see, it is trying to run the command. And that is all you need to do to install a ZSH plugin. Whether it's a theme, whether it's aliases, whether it's some extra functionality to add into ZSH, if it is a ZSH script, all you need to do is source the file and it will just work. Effectively, what source means is take everything in this file and just merge it into your ZSH RC. So it'd be the exact same as just getting rid of the file altogether and just sticking it in the same file. Now, one of the nice things that Oh My ZSH does do that can't really be done easily without some sort of plugin manager is automatically updating your plugins, which sounds really useful. It's really useful in Vim. Wouldn't it be useful here as well? It would be if the plugins actually updated because a lot of the plugins are just a script like this. Something like this never needs to be updated. This one was updated about seven years ago. And this is basically the case with a lot of them as well. So if we go find this one here, this was updated two years ago. This was updated, let's see, six years ago. Really the only ones that actually change are things like Spaceship, which is basically a ZSH prompt. And in the case of aliases, you probably don't want them to update because if a new one is added and it was going to be useful, you probably would have added it yourself already. And if not, then what's the point of even having it? And then if some alias is changed or removed and it's something you actually need, that's going to break your workflow. So I wouldn't update aliases anyway. So then for the one plugin you do need to update, just source it from a Git repo and then just update the git repo whenever you need to update it which is probably going to be once every six or so months 
There's also going to be a startup performance hit from running Oh My ZSH because it is an extra application tied to ZSH. But unless you're running something really, really slow, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And I'm the sort of person who likes to run NeoFetch every single time my terminal opens anyway. So in that case, I, I can't really complain about a performance hit. Because Oh My ZSH is trying to obfuscate away some of the basic stuff in ZSH, it uses a different syntax to actually do things like loading in plugins using a sort of list format, which is fine and all, but the problem you get, because of those issues I mentioned at the start with people being confused, a lot of the resources intended for people who are new to ZSH always point to Oh My ZSH's way of doing stuff. Obviously, this is caused by the popularity of it, but it does lead to a lot of confusion where people don't actually mark that this is the Oh My ZSH way and not the actual ZSH way itself. Now, there is one good thing that does come from Oh My ZSH, and that is that there's this, I guess, community built around building plugins for ZSH. While I'm never going to run Oh My ZSH, having a bunch of people who want to go and make things to add on to it helps out not just them, but helps out everyone else using ZSH as well. And for that, I can be thankful. And another thing I can be thankful for is Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Now, I know I've basically done this video, I don't know, maybe a, a year ago? Maybe it's not that long, I don't know. I've done basically this video before in the past, and I think it's one of my most popular videos as well. But looking back on that video, I wasn't really happy with the way that it actually turned out. And I wanted to go and redo it, and actually approach Oh My ZSH in a calmer way, I guess. Because while I don't think anyone should run it, I can at least appreciate the plugins that do come from it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pity, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave it, pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.